Hello all, I'm back and uh, I decided that since uh, we are on to prose, uh, let, let us do one more uh, story for this week and uh, I have chosen one of my favorites that's uh, Catherine Mansfield's uh, The Singing Lesson. I, I don't know whether any of you have uh, read any of Catherine Mansfield's works but uh, uh, they, they are very different. Her short stories are very different and this, this story of course is taken from the garden party and other stories. For those who wish to know a bit about um, Catherine uh, Mansfield, she was she's actually a New Zealander, uh, born and brought up in luxury but she was very different. They were a family of five children and uh, um, she was the third of the uh, four daughters that they were and least attractive and um, uh, but but from a very young age she had this penchant for writing uh, since they were very well off the children were in those days as early as I'm talking of the early um, <clears throat> she was born in 1888 so we are talking of the late 19th century and the early part of the 20th beginning of the 20th century they were actually sent the children were sent to England to study and for 16 years she was there but then she came back when she was 18 and she did not much like it she wanted the kind of freedom that uh, that London uh, gave her and that's the kind of freedom that she really wanted <clears throat> uh, probably because of that she broke away from the family and she decided to stay on her own in London uh, a very uh, different kind of a life for a young girl but she she created a niche for herself she believed in uh, empowering women as early as that <clears throat> and all the story sorry <clears throat> and all the stories uh, they have this uh, uh, you have very strong uh, female characters mm, apart from that there is there's always a strain of uh, sadness. Uh, uh, not that there is a tragedy, but there is a strain of sadness in the story. And there is always something about what she experienced in a life that, uh, that is reflected. And probably even in this story, uh, the little relationships that uh, have been displayed uh, for those who would want to do some more reading about Catherine Mansfield Beecham, that, that, I mean, that was her original name, of course, she married Murray, so she was called Catherine Mansfield Murray. I would, uh, I would suggest that there's, there's some wonderful um, videos available. There's one on uh, the life of Catherine Mansfield on YouTube. So if you are interested, just, just, uh, um, go on to YouTube and type uh, Catherine Mansfield biography. You will get a wonderful video of her life and the kind of partly bohemian, partly traditional kind of existence that she had. Okay, so now let uh, coming to the singing lesson. <clears throat> um, I thought we'll do it slightly differently instead of going through like I did with uh, B. Wordsworth. Let's, let's work according to certain themes that are there in the story. Now, when I was reading, I, I hope you have your text with you, um, Catherine Mansfield, The Singing Lesson, page 91. You will need your text. And, of course, I have a pencil. You can take whatever you wish to, a pen or a pencil. Now, you know, when I, was, I, I, I read this story quite a few times, and uh, each time I read it, I, I sort of came up with a different idea of how to, how to talk about it. Now, today I thought that let me let me talk about it as a, a story in communication or lack of it. What is a song? A song is an expression of thoughts, an expression of feelings, an expression of a person's emotions, right? It is an expression. Why do we express? We express because we wish to communicate most of the time, right? And if, if we were not uh, expressing it in uh, public, uh, we're sitting in our 
homes and singing okay that is that is for our own pleasure but uh, other than that whenever we sing or whenever we talk or whenever we uh, we uh, sit and um, voice our opinion it is it is uh, it is a means of communication so let us look at this story as a uh, uh, one a story in communication or at times lack of it yeah we keep that in mind a story in communication or perhaps a lack of it because uh, there are different motives in the story and different thoughts do come out as we go through now uh, if we look at uh, the let's break it up into little parts you know the the plot is absolutely very simple you have a singing teacher it's a singing lesson it's a it's what's a setting it's a school and definitely by the by the way it is described uh, the form and you know it is set in uh, in england london a school in you know, like you've read in enid blyton books a typical school yes it it appears to be like a boarding school so you have the forms so here is uh, the plot is very simple you have this uh, singing teacher miss meadows uh, uh, when it opens it is uh, the very fact that it opens with the sharp coldness and uh, the you know the opening sentence with despair cold sharp despair buried deep in a heart like a wicked knife that is miss meadows so what is what is the impression that you get it's a, a kind of a despairing cold lady right so the plot is this the singing teacher has to start a class and uh, just before going into class she receives a letter from her uh, her fiance uh, basil that uh, that their relationship is ended he no longer wants to marry her uh, and you know Uh, she's just about entering the class when with that letter in hand you can you can well imagine the kind of mood that she is in so she sort of changes what she had prepared probably she had prepared a song of great exaltation and joy she changes it and the children are directed to sing uh, the saddest song because uh, the title is a lament yes lamenting uh, so and the children oblige Uh, she plays the piano she's singing and the children are singing and suddenly there is a, a little girl who comes in to say that uh, the prince the headmistress wants to meet her because there is a telegram and uh, on opening the telegram uh, she gets good news because it's a it's an apology uh, letter from basil saying that uh, he's sorry not to not to think of the letter at all that was out of place the marriage is on so she folds the letter and gets back to class and there is a totally different miss meadows who comes back to class They're smiling rejoicing and said why are you singing this song a lament let's go back to what we had originally planned and as if you know the children are shocked amazed looking at her and she comes in as if nothing has happened it just changes yes the mood changes everything is changed about <laughs> from what she was in the beginning of the class and when she comes back after uh, getting the telegram right so that is the plot but through this apparently simple plot a lot of very deep intense thoughts are expressed like i said we'll keep communication in mind when we when we are um, discussing it so uh, let's let's start off with uh, how the story begins and what the the communication or lack of it that takes place okay now first if we start off with the the narration part of it uh, like i said despair cold despair buried deep in a heart like a wicked knife the opening lines are extremely important my advice is you must mark it out uh, you know the immediately what what is the kind of atmosphere that's created i mean it's 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 uh, it's a reminder of what it's a reminder of something that it's death it's evil it's something something which is so very negative 
yes, like buried deep in a heart like a wicked knife. What is buried? It's a simile, it's a very strong simile of pain and absolute despair. So there is so much of despair that the despair is akin to a knife buried deep in her heart. Something that has killed all her softer, kinder emotions. Everything is sort of dead within her. That is what is communicated through the opening lines. So the author, Catherine Mansfield, from the very beginning, creates that entire atmosphere of one of utter devastation where a person is broken into pieces yes knife piercing the heart that is the image that you get and from the cold despair we move into something else we move into cold corridors so you see the repetition of the word cold shows again lack of warmth lack of emotion and that is what the author communicates to us in the very beginning to get the mood of the story in place, right? While the children are running around, they're moving from one class to another, and you know what it is. It's a music class, so the children are really looking forward to it, and it's all girls' school. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, the excitement of the children is different. Harid skip, fluttered by, and there's nothing, cold, no coldness in that. The coldness is only with Miss Meadows and within her and of course reflected in the winter morning probably outside you have cold corridors then you have hollow classrooms again hollow devoid of life and then of course you have this interaction that takes place i'm breaking the story into little parts the interaction that takes place between Miss Meadows and the science teacher. Now you see, the science teacher is not given a name, probably not important. It's yes, not important. Uh, she's a, Miss Meadows is a music teacher, so you know somebody who is so passionate about music will not bother about anything else, science, maths, history, not concerned. Yes, we are science, we are creative. Yes. Some of my choices moved to poets and creative artists over the last uh, three of these lessons that we have had. Anyway, so there's this interaction between Miss Meadows and the science teacher and uh, uh, what, what is the first impression that you get? Everything about her was sweet, pale like honey. Yes. And Miss Meadows was with that the despair, it's like the knife that she's hugging closely to herself. So what do you think is, do you think really there is communication happening between the two? No. They are at, po they are poles apart. Absolutely character-wise, state of mind, poles apart. Yes, because she is sweet, pale like honey. Yes, soft, sweet, full of... Uh, maybe a lot of uh, warmth in her uh, with a smile on her face yes and uh, and she's got yellow hair you know and then you have like Miss Meadows is uh, uh, you know you surprise the line here that you could see a bee caught at the tangles because she's so sweet uh, she's so perfect she's perfection personified and probably the mood that Miss Meadows is in she she just hates any everybody and anybody she sees, right? So there is this contrast. Yes, uh, one thing very important you must know that uh, you have uh, science. The science mistress here does not have much of a role. Yet you have details about her, her physical self, while uh, uh, there is not much of a description about Miss Meadows. Yes, we know that she's sort of a very firm music teacher. She wears a a cap and a gown and she carries a baton in her hand, a typical music teacher, yes. Uh, remember the knife is not a real knife. What is she hugging on to? She's hugging, it's, it's, it's like the metaphor, it's a metaphor for the pain, the wound that is in her heart. Yes, right? Remember that, yes. So, 
the smile opposite the wound the science mistress versus miss meadows yes the frozen look in miss meadows eyes and the sugary smile on the science mistress absolutely so you know that though they are talking to each other there is absolutely no communication of the heart nobody has responded to each the others feelings or emotions here yes lack of communication very very simply lack totally lack of communication then let's move to the the class it it's a it's it's so typical of a class children are just settling down they are, they are talking and then suddenly miss meadows comes in there were uh, students from three forms four five and six yes and and so many children and they were chatting they were getting ready because it's a music class it's a singing class they're looking forward to it there's a lot of chatter what are we going to talk about and also the chatter shows that miss meadows is probably not such a difficult person like she will not she's not going to come in and immediately uh, you know like scream and shout because of there's so much of chattering going about um, uh, probably that that is conveyed but as soon as she comes in there is silence so the respect that she generates is also important to know yes so uh, so now the next piece of communication that we'll have is between the um the teacher and the students yes uh she brings in remember her pain into the singing class yes she has brought in the pain into a singing class so even if a a favorite student mary beasley who sort of you know she is the one who who sort who helps in setting the class up and she plays the accompaniments and um uh, as miss meadows strides into class she immediately says silence and uh and she gets everybody ready and then you see the this entire thing about um silence please immediately and looking at nobody a glance swept over the sea of colored flannel blouses with bobbing pink faces and hands quivering butterfly hair bows and music books outspread so the atmosphere is one of of great fun and frolic because it's a singing class you have a description of flannel blouses you have a description of pink faces quivering butterfly hair bows so you have butterfly something you know all those images which 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 give you a sense of joy happiness it's there and she comes in and she immediately sort of the atmosphere changes and this one sentence phrase here which i would like to quote she knew perfectly well what they were thinking midi is in a wax yes now this is a uh, midi is in a wax is a slang uh, from yester years you know it was used very early early part of the 19th century when you wanted to uh, communicate that somebody is angry you said oh he is in a wax okay uh, so and they would know from the way she was conducting herself you know you know uh, communication is also not just through words it is also through your body language yes you communicate a lot through your body language so the way she she just she was striding into class uh, like no nonsense kind of a look on her face with the baton in her hand uh, the children said okay we cannot be talking yes because she is going to take us to task right and uh, and everywhere again when she comes into the class the same thought is repeated what could the thoughts of those creatures matter to someone who stood there bleeding to death pierced to the heart to the heart by such a letter so the pain of that letter that a fiance had written to her about breaking the engagement that caused her so much pain what would these children know how would they know so you see there is a distance between the students and the teacher because there is no communication the children don't know they only go by what they see a body language communicates to them her state of mind which is i think they've understood well which is one of absolute anger 
anger born out of pain in this case right okay now uh, if we look at this part after this comes this our bridegroom's description what do we get to know about basil yes the through the letter yeah through the letter we get to know that uh, a marriage he says is a mistake the letter is a form of communication so the fiance has communicated to miss meadows basil has communicated to miss meadows through the letter yes a marriage would be a mistake not that i do not love you i love you as much as it is possible for me to love any woman but truth to tell i have come to the conclusion that i am not a marrying man and the idea of settling down fills me with nothing but he is probably giving a reason as to why he doesn't want to get married now just before after engagement the marriage is all set the letter comes in has he what is the reason cold feet probably unsure last minute but he says i am not the marrying kind he doesn't he just he doesn't uh, put the blame on her he says i am not the marrying kind i i i do love you it's not that i don't but i am not the marrying kind and then then there is something very painful about this letter which actually hurts miss meadows the most and that is uh the idea of settling down fills me with nothing but he had originally written disgust and he did not take the you know he did not take the trouble of really scratching it out fully and writing regret because she could read the word disgust and what does the word disgust communicate to her is very simple like he is disgusted with the thought of marrying her so the disgust of the thought is transferred naturally for her it is transferred to herself like i am not worth marrying right and at this juncture it is important for us to know the state of mind of miss meadows because anybody else you would wonder why i mean uh why does she bother if he doesn't want to marry fine he, if she can uh, jolly well have uh, live a life to get somebody else but what's important is very important uh, information that was given us later in the story she was 30 he was 25 this is also got uh, something that uh, catherine mansfield herself she did get married to somebody who was younger to her in age it had been a miracle simply a miracle to hear him say as they walked home from church that very dark night you know somehow or other i've got fond of you so now you know why for a woman of 30 it is so important yes probably she feels that uh, it's gone i mean the marrying age is gone we are not looking at the 21st century we are looking at a story which is set in the early part of the 20th century yes. if this marriage breaks she believes that she will never get married ever again so it is it is definitely do not read it from your perspective read it from her perspective a 30 year old woman who had perhaps uh, had reached a point where she thought she would never get married and then basil happens and now again just before marriage when everybody knows that she's going to get married the school knows about it he decides to call off the engagement so you get a picture of basil here you might say fine he's practical he knows the marriage will not last so call it off before marriage instead of going through something right but for her it is very very difficult because she was continuing with life probably because of this beautiful thing that had happened to her yes now uh 
something uh, that uh, maybe I will I will do this later on the motives motives that come up. Uh, but when we are with Basil, let me uh, continue with this. Uh, he says that on uh, it had been a miracle, simply a miracle to hear him say, right? So that remember the word miracle, which is there in this story. Yes. Now, when his when she's going back to thinking about it, her thought says, what could have possessed him to write such a letter? So immediately, now remember the music class is happening and she's thinking about the letter. So do you think her mind is in the class? No, it isn't. So she says, what could have led to it? Because his last letter had been all about fumed oak bookcase he had bought for our books, the natty little hall stand he had seen, a very neat affair with a carved owl on a bracket holding three hat brushes in its claws. Yes. So he said that things were so different because in the previous letter he was talking about picking up the uh, hat stand, he was th thinking of picking up the, um, the bookcase where they would keep all their books. So what has transpired that has caused him to send this letter? Yes, breaking it off, breaking off their marriage, their engagement, sorry. And as, as she thinks about it, her thoughts also go to something which is very frightening. She says that everybody in this school it's a, it's a small school, it's a small community. He says that everybody here knows about this engagement. So probably if he calls it off, she, no, she may not be able to continue working here. Why do you think she says that? Because it is going to be a loss of face for her. She's so, she belie she's sort of so embarrassed by the entire episode that she would find it very difficult to continue. She must have been in this school for a long, long time. She had made her own position, a position of great respect. With this engagement, probably her, her position was enhanced. But now after all this, then to say that this marriage is not taking place was a complete, complete loss of face. And for a 30-year-old woman, she would find it extremely difficult to cope with it. So, remember, her thoughts are not just that the marriage is not going to take place, the engagement has ended, but also probably her job here in the school has to come to a stop. She cannot be here in this school after being jilted by Basil. A person who has always lived with a head held high, proud of her standing, proud of her work, probably finds it very embarrassing at this stage of her life to live with this kind of a compromise. Yes. Uh, again, from a woman's perspective, the story you need to read the story from that point of view and also from uh, the a different century that we are talking about, not the modern generation. So uh, this relationship between the two is more or less uh, clear from these letters that have come. I'm not moving on to the chain that takes place. But what is important for you to know is this letter has thus led to a change in the singing class that is going to happen. She had planned on a song that was full of life, but she moves it away to a song of lament. Yes. Uh, when Mary comes to greet her with a yellow chrysanthemum, which was a kind of a norm, it appears to be a kind of a tradition, she just 
disregards it for the very first time and you know that it's it's a norm because tears come into, you can see tears flowing out of the girl's eyes because mary has been doing this for every singing class and she's wondering what has gone wrong what has she done wrong that miss meadows does not acknowledge the flower that she's offering yes so this the entire mood and environment is one of lament born out of the letter that she has received so every you will find a description where he says that the tension is growing every note is a sigh a sob a groan of awful mournfulness so even the lament the song is one of pain one of despair yes and that the disorder that is within her very important the disorder the upheaval that is within her has been communicated to the children through the choice of the song the words of the song and the meaning of the song fast are ah, too fast fade the roses o oh, pleasure soon autumn yields into winter drear fleetly a ah, fleetly music gay measure passes away from the listening ear so it is about passing away fading away the roses fade away winter is coming autumn has faded away time is passing by so everything is dying winter is a time of death yes so pleasure is dying joys are dying so the ex- her internal pain is being transmitted communicated to the children and transmitted through the songs yes to the song that they are singing so you see the sigh the sob the groan a mournfulness yes that is reflected with what a marriage is a mistake mournful mistake you see how from the inner to the outer there is a reflection of the same feeling that is continued through the poem the, so the lament is like a funeral march it's like the end of a dream yes the the waning of the moon the whole environment is dark morose yes so make the uh, that drear winter drear there there is the sound as if there is a cold wind blowing the cold wind that is within our heart yes is blowing yes and the atmosphere of the singing class is so heavy yes and she's she's uh, shouting out orders to them yes because there is there is no calmness there is no peace for the first time in a singing class there is only misery there is only pain so the happy singing lesson has become a world of pain and sorrow that is within miss meadows heart brought about by this letter so the first half of the st- of the story talks about pain and anguish and that is being communicated from the main protagonist miss meadows to the children who are part of a class and through the song that they are singing the lament right so i would like you to go through the first part of the story from uh, page 91 92 to uh, to 94 yes please go through till page 94 we shall continue in the next lesson the remaining section where we will bring in we'll keep to the theme of communication but also bring in uh, some of the major symbols and motifs in the story right okay thank you enjoy